Three, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Anthony Lemke. I like that. That was quite energetic. Right on stage. How the are few, you, sir? The few, the proud. <laughs> Isn't that Henry V? I think you guys should know that. Uh, we, oh, we few, we happy few. There it is. We'll take down the French with this, with this panel. Yeah, yep. <laughs> we'll be real, totally. <laughs> there are warriors out there, I can tell. I can Absolutely. Tell. <laughs> thank you all for coming. And thank you for being here. Oh, I was thinking, thanks. the last time I saw you, uh, Jeff yeah. Terabainen, who plays Lieutenant Anders, was dragging you by your pants up a gravel hill. It was on the set of Dark Matter. It wasn't yes. just for fun. <laughs> he was doing that. He was practicing outside the set, actually. Was he? Yeah, was he? That's right. He was just dragging me up a gravel hill, and I was like, oh, damn, Jeff, I think we've got this. Can we do it inside on the rubber pieces? <laughs> yeah. no. And he's like, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> but Three does spend a hell of a lot of his time bleeding or bruised or dirty. So it's kind of <laughs> nice to see you clean and recovered for once. <laughs> yeah, I do spend a lot of my time, did spend a lot of my it time, sounds... boo, oh. um, uh, doing, doing that. And it was uh, actually it was the thing that I, I loved most about that character, to be honest. The fact that he was... Dirty? Uh, dirty. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you just have to take a shower in life yeah. and you don't know. The, but, maybe the showers didn't work on the Raza, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fact that he, uh, he, he just wasn't really that good at anything. He wasn't like good at fighting, really. I mean, yeah, he'd beat the, the lower level bad guys, but he'd never really beat anybody else. And if you were a female, forget it. He'd get your ass kicked. <laughs> um, so, and, and he wasn't really all that good at being anything other than loyal. That's mm -hmm. kind of all. He was almost like the most loyal guy on the entire ship. Mm -hmm. um, never really got sidetracked with any other, any other sort of priorities other than the ship and the people on the ship, mm -hmm. which is bizarre that, you know, that character would be, would end up having that central life to the ship. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was, it was fun to play that character. But he was, I mean, I think I would say he's also was really honest, even yeah. if it disagreed with everyone else, he <laughs> was definitely was honest. He certainly was, uh, especially in the, well, I mean, almost every year, but first year we did it a lot where... You know, we'd have these big discussions about what we should do and what was ethical, and three would be like, listen, that's all a load of hooey. I think we should do this, and you guys are screwed. Um, and in the end, you know, 50% <laughs> of the time, three would end up being right, mm -hmm. uh, which was kind of funny. Even though they wouldn't ever listen to him, he would end up being right. So uh, that was, uh, it was fun to play, for sure. So really, he was like the cleverest guy, really. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> he was accidentally correct sometimes. <laughs> and... Um, Congratulations on a fantastic three, and I'm sure that you'll agree in saying that we're really sorry to hear about the cancellation, yeah, but sucks. we know that you, and especially Joe, really fought for uh, getting the show back, you know, with the fans, alongside mm. the fans. So how are you doing now? How have things moved on? Uh, I'm, I'm weeping every night. Um, I, I find it hard <laughs> to stand sometimes in the morning. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, listen, it was great. The, the fan support when, when the show was canceled was, um, was wonderful. Um, I felt, kind of felt like yeah, a nice little awake, you know, mm -hmm. like an online wake for a show that meant a lot to, you know, to me and to the other actors and to Joe and uh, clearly to some folks out there as well. So it was, um, yeah, it was pretty cool, to be honest. It was. I mean, certainly, uh, I spoke to Roger Cross, who plays Six. And he, one of the things he said was um, that he'd never seen such a fan outpouring for a cancel show. And he's been on a fair few cancel sci-fi yeah. shows. <laughs> he knows. Yeah. So did that take you by surprise? Yeah, it did. I don't, you know, we, don't, we didn't have as strong a social media presence as many other shows. It wasn't in the DNA of our show. Um, we didn't, you know, create the show so that there were neat little hashtags that, that people could use. We didn't even really have a, <laughs> like, which was kind of a mistake, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we didn't really even have a, a proper hashtag other than dark matter, which was, yeah. of course, a very common hashtag for a lot of things that had nothing to do with us. And so, um, you know, unless our show was on, you'd, you know, hashtag dark matter, and there'd be like a makeup line, there'd be the scientific principle, there'd be a video game, there'd be another move, like it'd be mm. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, 
Consequently, we, we were really surprised when, when that happened and all of a sudden, um, th yeah, there, there was a whole ton of people on social media who, who seemed to care a heck of a lot about the show from all over the world and it was, uh, yeah, it felt good. It felt like we were all ce celebrating something that meant something to us collectively and uh, it allowed us to move on. Yeah, hashtag or not. Razzie, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, in terms of those sort of messages from all over the world, are there any particular fan messages that stood out for you? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, it, on my Twitter account, I retweeted a number of them. Um, you know, playing my character, uh, I found it really surprising to see how that character actually affected people. Because I get it if you're playing the android, for instance, um, where there's a really... There's a there's a logical set of people who who live lives that are uh, are challenging in many ways um, who can identify with the androids sense of limitation and inability to to really understand social interaction and there were a lot of those uh, there were a lot of those tweets out there and there still are people who really identify with the androids character um, but you know me being like a dude you know who doesn't seem to have a whole hell of a lot of trouble getting along in the world. Um, I kind of figured that nobody really identified with that in that sense of like, not that they didn't like the character, but like to, that like would come home and, and like learn from that character. Um, and so there were a whole number of those folks who tweeted out little thank yous and responses and you know, pe people who would say that that somehow three allowed them to contextualize their experience. Mm -hmm. And he certainly did for me. Like, I mean, I can probably name a whole bunch of scenes right now where I went home and I literally changed the way that I behaved because of the scene that I played. And the biggest one was the scene in 304 with, uh, that's the time loop episode where we live in the same mm -hmm. day over and over and over again. And two says to me, you know, maybe if you just do things a little differently, you know, try to change it up, that might break the loop. So I, I go when I try to change things up, and one of the things I try to do is I go and I try to um, change the way five is feeling. So the first time, I go in and I just see her and she's sort of mopey because six is gone and he's left the ship. And uh, I just sort of walk by because I God knows what to do. You know, she's like a teenage kid. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> so the second time, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to stop and try to make her feel better. And I say mm -hmm. something and it doesn't work. And then the third time, and I say something and it doesn't work. And the fourth time, I'm like, oh, for God's sake, I'm sorry. I really wish that I could say something to you to make you feel better, but I can't. Yeah. And it makes me feel shitty that you feel bad. And she's like, oh, that makes me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> and I have kids that frequently need to be consoled. And my reaction as a father is always to try to help them. And that scene has been a reminder to me that I can't help them, that it's not my life, it's not my experience. Mm -hmm. And all I can ever do is sit next to them and be there for them and listen to them. And there were so many moments like that that I got to play, largely because Three doesn't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> right? That's Which is, where we relate. I think. That's it, right? <laughs> In every single moment, three kind of doesn't really know what he's doing. He's winging it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can definitely relate to that. And, I, and that's the part of the fan outpouring, those the people who, who were like, yeah, that was, that I, that I could identify with that because mm -hmm. I'm not a superhero and none of us are and neither was three <laughs> in any way. Uh, so that's why I love playing that character yeah. too, so. And speaking of your kids, have they seen you playing three? Yeah, yeah. I used to what watch uh, when we live tweeted that. Uh, my kids were always at my side, and uh, almost always. And they watched almost every episode, mm -hmm. except for the ones where I'm smooching other people. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, actually, no, they, in, the third, in the third season, they saw me smooch uh, Sarah. And uh, they were like, <gasps> yeah, I can kill people, but apparently I can't kiss them on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know where the boundaries lie. Yeah, but I think it's because like they get it. I'm not actually killing people, but they're like, you're actually kissing that girl, mm -hmm. Daddy. That's that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's not a fake kiss. Yeah, <laughs> computer graphic kiss. <laughs> I guess it could be in a way. Yeah, she's, sure. I don't know. She's a kind of computer consciousness. So. That's true. She is a computer, but the actor wasn't. <laughs> the so actor there it was is. Not. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I. 
So if you guys have any questions for Anthony, if you want to line up at the mics and we will we'll get to you shortly. Are there actually mics? In this room? <laughs> there are. There's one oh, on that. That's right. the side. One on that side. And it's hard for us to see actually. Yeah, you guys have to like guys. walk way back yeah. to the mics. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long walk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but one of the things I wanted to know is so fans voted season three, episode nine, which was the episode where you guys go back six hundred years to uh, yeah. as the favorite episode. Would yeah. that surprise you? Was that your favorite at all? It didn't surprise me. Um, I think one of the interesting things about Dark Matter is that Joe, and we kind of happened into it, because in the beginning, in the first season, it was a show that a lot of people tuned into for one reason, which was basically uh, who did it and why, right? And then that disappeared, yeah. and yeah. so what's the show? And um, to be honest, we lost a bunch of audience because what was the show? The show ended up being about family and maybe we didn't get there fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we didn't uh, brand it about, no, 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 it's just about these five or six people just trying to live their lives, trying to do the right thing by each other and kind of consistently not, mm -hmm. um, but yet still working it out. And it was a consistent challenge every time I would get a script and it was like, that's not what this show is. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, that's what the show has always been about mm -hmm. after that season one. And lo and behold, there's a show where there's like almost no sci-fi elements, like no aliens. Yeah, there's some time travel, whatever. I mean, like it was like in, there was no crazy sets. It, we weren't dressed bizarrely. Mm -hmm. It was us hanging out together in a world that we're all very familiar with. And lo and behold, that's the one the fans vote uh, as their favorite show. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's, sometimes you don't always know what you have. And, uh, and that's what we had. And it's sad to see that go, because that's the show that I've always wanted to mm. shoot. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll get it back in one way, shape, or form, because certainly there's been a lot of discussion about that. Yeah. And one of the things that um, Joe Malozzi, who's the showrunner, said was that he was considering a kind of a, a crossover between Dark Matter and Stargate. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you... Do you know anything about I that do, at all? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, I do. I don't think that that's going to happen. I mean, listen, yeah. anything could happen. Uh, I, I, Joe's blog, I think, is pretty... goes through it all, so I'll try not to... I'll try not to uh, get too specific, but I think there was a desire uh, from the folks who were, re who were rebooting Stargate to, uh, my understanding is they're rebooting it in their own platform, which is really kind of cool. They're like, well, I'm gonna give this to Netflix. I'll just have my own internet platform. That's all Stargate. And you guys can just come and give me the money instead of giving it to Netflix. <laughs> Sell your Netflix shares. Um, <laughs> And uh, that's a very good idea, actually. Why do we need Netflix? Why don't they just make shows directly just for sure. us? <laughs> um, so they're doing that. And uh, I think in the context of that, they were hoping that um, they could put Dark Matter on that because, of course, it's got a lot of ties to Stargate. And uh, there was, I think, some talk of a bit of a crossover here and there. Uh, again, that's above my pay grade. You'd have to talk to Joe about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it was more in the context of this new platform um, mm, that, right. that they had. And um, my understanding of it, um, again, uh, Joe would be far more specific about that, was uh, it had to do with the contracts. So Netflix has been a great supporter of the show for a very long time, since the very beginning. It was like, wait a minute. So they're going to give you money to have a first window, which is not on network television, but it's gonna be on the internet, and that's the first window? No. <laughs> so we did not get the okay no. to uh, end up on that platform for obvious competitor reasons. Um, but it was something certainly the fans were interested in, the whole idea of a Dark Matter Stargate crossover. Yeah. But if, to me, I was a bit surprised. I thought, surely if they have a Stargate, that would negate the need for a blink drive, so <laughs> they can go anywhere without it. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it's a little odd. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they would have done it, but no, uh, yeah. anyway, it's again, it's above my... And, um, but you do have a sister show on, on sci-fi, which has just been read, which is Killjoys, and I think that's the other one that people yeah. are thinking about mm -hmm. could be in that same world. Would you have liked yeah. to see that? And if so, how would you see that? Those up. bastards, I don't want to see yeah. them. I'm kidding around. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's always occurred. It's always occurred to me that there there would be such a natural crossover between yeah. Killjoys, more so than Stargate, to be honest. Yeah. But Killjoys, I'm like, <laughs> geez, they're about a bunch of bounty hunters, and we're bounty. Yeah. And the shows feel fairly similar to me. Um, yeah, sure, it would have been wonderful to have a crossover. And um, so yeah, they would have been chasing that's... you, basically. Yeah, I, I don't know. Don't Who know. knows? <laughs> that, that certainly would have been cool. Um, but uh, that again, that didn't happen. Um, you know, the industries an interesting place. The industry is made up of people mm -hmm. and people have uh, their own priorities and their own egos and their own reasons for the things that they do and uh, it's unfortunate that never happened. Yeah. Well, I have to talk about the explosive finale because it was a hell of a finale, definitely. Yeah, boy. Just yeah. wait till you see season four, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but is it okay that I'm annoyed that Six apparently died at the end? I was like, did he die? But who knows? I know. But. Truth is, I actually don't know. <laughs> to yeah. be honest, I mean, Joe does actually because mm -hmm. he's written yeah. many of the scripts already for season four. I mean, that's something that Jay, our producer, had hired the whole writing team to do: start writing because we're getting a season four. <laughs> yeah. And we see three obviously leave with Porsche Lynn. Yep. Where do you think they were going? Oh, I think they were gonna. Um, they were going to become beet farmers <laughs> on a distant planet somewhere in the far reaches of the galaxy and, uh, and create little robo kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. They would be scary kids, actually. Yeah, possibly. I think they would be really scary kids. <laughs> um, I, I don't, to be honest, I haven't the faintest clue. I really don't know where they were going. Um, I, I, it was kind of out of the blue for me that she mm -hmm. came and saved uh, three. But, uh, you know, it was a fun relationship and a fun dynamic between... Uh, between the two of us, those two particular characters, uh, and also between Boone and Portia. It was yeah. a far more sensual, sexual relationship, and it was more playful and fun. Mm -hmm. um, the relationship between two and three ended up being a lot more like, um, like platonic friends, uh, colleagues, co-workers, and... Um, I kind of liked that. Yeah. Again, maybe you know, that's maybe one of the reasons our show was canceled. People were like, just have sex already. Um, a lot more sex, more kissing, um, which didn't really, wasn't our show. It wasn't the DNA of our show. Um, and in the beginning, in season one, yeah, there was a little, that weird love triangle thing. And I, at the end of the season, both, I think Melissa as well. Um, but I went to Joe and I was like, I don't, I'm not sure this is where we want to take it. I, I think it's, I think it's way cooler to not take it there and and f to show what a relationship, like a mature adult relationship between a male and female can be that, yeah, fine, she's hot and, you know, we've had sex in, in the show, but, the, but it, it can be something different. And that doesn't mean there's no sexual un tension mm -hmm. and there's no sort of underlying, you know, I'd be jealous if, and that we would have seen that in season yeah. four, actually. There was oh, going yeah. to be a, a romance line between two and another person. And of course, three would have had an opinion on that, but that doesn't mean that we should be together. Um, it was just a fun, I just wanted, you know, that, that relationship was a fun relationship between the two of us. And so the, and the other side of that was the Portia Lynn yeah. side of it, which was almost like taking a relationship and dividing it in, you know, like men and women often have a little tension between them. All right, well, we're going to take that sexual tension, we'll put it in the Portia relationship, <laughs> and then we'll have the other stuff in the two relationships, so... I don't know where that would have gone. Would have been fun. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe. I mean, because two is a really interesting character. I wonder how three would have got on with the possessed two. Because, I mean, she was a super weapon, basically, an alien yeah. infested, if that's the right word, um, <laughs> two. Yeah, well, she would have kicked his ass also. That's yeah. how they would have gotten along. That's pretty much how it goes. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> But um, it was one of the things that surprised me because the fact that she has the... I don't even, do they have a name, the aliens? I keep calling them the alien mist, but I don't know. Uh, what we call them the squid ink people. Because <laughs> the they're kind of, you know, <laughs> like they look like, you know, when squids shoot their ink out and it's this sort of like amorphous black blob. Yeah. I, I don't know that they had a name, to be honest. Did, did, did Joe say they had a name? No, it's me. But Aliens. That's it. Yeah. Squid aliens. Squid ink. Squid, Squid ink, ink aliens. aliens. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she obviously she was um, you know made up with the nanites and everything else. Yeah. So it surprised me that she would be possessed because surely the nanites would fight it off. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that one. But uh, I guess you know I guess she was a replicant. She was made yeah. 
to sort of be the host body for these yeah. things. So, but then of course modified and whatever else. So yeah, it's an interesting one. Ooh, the science it's of complex. the show. I try not to think too much of it. <laughs> what do you think um, would have happened to three? like sort of later on, because we know that he definitely had some sort of residual effects from being mm. taken over by the aliens. Mm -hmm. Was that sort of part of the, did you know like whether there was anything more to that storyline? Um, I sort of did uh, in the sense that that was one of those moments where uh, that storyline evolved th through a discussion with Joe where mm -hmm. after in season two where the Squid Ink guys are evicted from my body and, and spaced. <laughs> um, I, Joe and I had a conversation. I'm like, you know, what if this was a little bit like um, chicken pox, right? So you get chicken pox when you're a little kid, and then you can get shingles later on, 40 years later. Mm -hmm. is, it, is there some residual effect to having these squid ink guys inside my body? And it was more a question, um, because of course that's fun to see things ripple through. And, and so then Joe was like, hmm, and he took it where he took it um, in season three. There was that one episode that dealt with the fact that when we got close to the, to the portal, my character was totally freaking out and afraid. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. Um, yeah. <laughs> so clearly that would have been there. Mm -hmm. You can't play it once. And then all of a sudden we're fighting the aliens in season four and I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, like you can't do that, right? Yeah. You, have to, you have to be consistent with that. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it would have gone somewhere else because I was the only person on the show who had them yeah. inside him, um, with the exception, of course, too, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of it all, so. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of some of the storylines, I mean, we, there was certainly Rio dropped a few bombshells, I think episode 12, and um, so he obviously told Three that he was um, essentially responsible for Sarah's illness. Oh, he yeah. told the android about the sort of upcoming android rebellion. He told two about having a daughter, six that his blood had been blown. He was, he was pretty talkative. For Rio. Rio. That he talked more in that episode than he did in the entire season, for <laughs> yeah. God's sake. Yeah, but and here's the question. Was it all true? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, we, we, see, we had those questions on set where he's... I mean, clearly, we, we think the Sarah thing is true, and we wouldn't put it past three for that to be true, but was it? I mean, three mm -hmm. th thought it was, and he shot himself in the head because he didn't want to think about it anymore, the fact that he was the one who basically ended up killing his, his love. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not exactly beyond Rio to manipulate, mm -hmm. so I don't know the answer to that, and I guess season four would have, would have told the answer to that, but I, I think it's probably fair to say that it's a but it's a stronger choice to think that he did mm. do it. Um, do you, I mean, of those kind of storylines, or potential storylines, which one would you like to explore the most? Oh God, all of them. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was so looking forward to season four, to be honest, I was really looking forward to it because it <laughs> kind of felt like, you know, I was never a big fan of the corporate war and, you know, I, it's, it, that felt like it was something that was happening outside our characters to our characters um, that was a little confusing. Uh, uh, so when we dispatched with that, and whether it's the aliens or whether it's the, the uh, android revolution, both of those are, they come far more from within our characters. And so I was, and that was always in the DNA of the show. Like that yeah. was always Joe's plan to set all this stuff up, create this really complicated set of relationships, and then have all those relationships culminate in this, uh, in this revolution and fighting off the aliens. And I was just looking forward to that, you know? I mean, there's, Joe, like I said, Joe had taught me a bunch of things in life that, you know, oh God, yeah, I have to remember to do this. And the best television does. And so I was looking forward to hearing what Joe had to say about um, situations that happen in real life. I mean, heck, my, my wife is Serbian. So you wanna talk about something you know, my wife isn't, but her, her family was. And when I knew her, Yugoslavia was exploding and we were killing each other, you know, like who used to be friends. And like, how do you deal with that? We're like, you know, your, your dad's Serbian and your mom's Croatian. And you're like, uh, I can't pick a side. And because I'm both. And the fact that you're saying that I can't be both, I have to be one or the other. Um, I, Oh God, that's horrible, and it's happened so often in in the extreme cases like Yugoslavia, but also in cases like, you know, a little bit about what's going on here in uh, in you know with Brexit and all the rest, where part of that element is 
no, there's us and there's them. And, and that's a real human emotion. I don't mean to downplay it. I, I, I was look, actually looking forward to yeah. what Joe had to say because he's got really intelligent things to say that, are, that come across as someone who's thought about this. It's not, it's not as simple as saying, oh, that's really bad, you Yugoslavians, you know, fighting <laughs> each other and forcing people to pick a side. It's not as simple as that because it keeps happening over and over and over. And the impulse to create an us and them comes from somewhere real. It's not a fake, bizarre, made up bullshit emotion. Um, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, the best television has a chance to address these things that are recurring challenges for humanity. Like how do we put that, other than this sort of simple, you know, liberal, ah, let's include everybody, it's wonderful, life's great, and there are no rules, we'll just include everybody. And that's great. Like, I love that life, except it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes there are impetuses that, that, that come from a real place, and how do you put those in a spot? And that's what I was, that's the, the set of storylines that I was most psyched mm -hmm. to, be able to, uh, to be able to explore. I mean, I think certainly in, in terms of that and um, sort of separating the crew or members of the crew, Rio was almost integral there because he was uh, he was driving the war at the same time. Yeah. You know, certainly in the end, you're kind of using his help. And there is that the decision: do you kill this guy or do you treat him almost like family? And you, is he redeemable? You know, mm. where, where uh, my character get? thought he wasn't. <laughs> he was <Yeah>. like done. <laughs> um, Haven't you killed him already? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, that's a good question. Is he redeemable? Um, you know, I think. Oh boy, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, because that really falls into those, in, into that simple question of do you believe that people can ever change? I mean, our, our show, our show seemed to fall down on the side of yes, mm -hmm. um, people can. I mean, that's, that's the DNA of the show that, you know, we are perpetually looking for our second chance or third <laughs> or fourth or tenth. Um, and, and it's beautiful to think that, that, that people can change. Um, we had a mechanism by which he could, we could force the change. We yeah. could wipe his mind and set him back and get rid of Rio and get four back. Mm -hmm. So he could have, we could have done that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, what do you think? Can, could Rio ever not, can you ever not be the, the, the accumulation of your experiences and memories? Can you mm -hmm. ever unprogram that without wiping your memories? What do you think? I think you always learn from your experiences, and I think that it can change you, but how it changes you mm. is the difficult one. I mean, I think for Rio, maybe you guys agree or not, um, I mean, I think for Rio, the way that he ended things, he almost felt a bit defeated, like mm -hmm. he probably took the wrong path, and hopefully he would then learn to maybe trust you guys more, but if he was then put in his position of power again, you That's just it. don't know. So I would, know. I would hope that... Maybe if he stayed on the Raza <laughs> for a while, <laughs> he could have... Purgatory all battles. season four, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's it. He's just in the isolation yeah. booth yeah. the entire season. <laughs> um, so as I said, you guys, if you want to ask a question, pop up to the mics and you can do. Yep. We actually have a question for you oh. from Lieutenant Anders himself, <laughs> Jeff Taravainen. Hi, Jeff, where you if do. you're watching or listening. Um, we did have our video. It's not working, so I'm going to read it out for you. So yeah. he said, my question, which I guess a lot of people are asking is uh, what have you got coming up? From what I understand, congratulations, because you've got something on blind spots. And he goes, I'm hoping it's something pretty permanent, because when I, when I look back at to who I lost roles to, you were the guy I lost the most roles to. <laughs> so I need you to get something permanent so I have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's not permanent, Jeff, sorry. Uh, yeah, blind spot. Uh, I just actually came directly uh, from that set to here, um, shooting in New York, shooting in Morocco, and uh, it's, uh, it's a nice arc on mm -hmm. season three. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, tune in. Starts in America last Friday night, and uh, somewhere around mid-season, my character appears. It's, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a good time. And in, in terms of permanent stuff, man, no, I don't, you know, I don't... Uh, I'm a Canadian actor, guys. <laughs> like, there's a difference, you know? Like, we don't have 150 productions shooting at once in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so a month and a half is basically what it's been since our show's been canceled. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's been trying to figure out for me what the heck I want to do next, what show would interest me. Blind Spot came along, which was great. That's been the past few weeks, three weeks. Um, so uh, I don't, you know, in terms of what's next, I really believe that, you got to put it out there. 
and I haven't figured out what to put out there. Like when Dark Matter <laughs> came along, I had literally told my agent when I moved back from Montreal, and I'm sure some of you heard the story, that I, I, like I gave her, I said, this is, this is exactly what I want. And I described a show, and I described the role, and I literally described Dark Matter to a T, literally to the fact that it was Canadian produced, not American produced, um, like everything. And there was a whole set that I wanted, and the character was like a Han Solo kind of character, and then lo and behold, this character comes along and on this show that was Canadian produced, where you know they're likely to hire a Canadian actor to, to tell the stories, to lead the stories, as opposed to, say, a show like Arrow, which shoots in Canada, where, yeah, there's lots of Canadians on that show, but it's not our stories. We're helping their stories. And uh, so this came along, and I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, and that's happened a lot in my life, I'll be honest with you, and I don't think it's just my life. I think it... Mm -hmm. I think there's something about knowing that. And even if you don't get exactly that, n knowing, okay, this is where I'm walking. This is it's the old riding a bicycle thing. If you start looking like this on your bicycle, you're going to veer that way. It's that simple. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I have to figure out where I want to look mm -hmm. on my bicycle. And, you know, a month and a half after losing a show that meant a lot to you is not, not that long. It'll happen. Oh. It'll happen. I'm getting there. There's some clarity. We'll see. Did you keep anything from the set at all? Uh, I was offered a bunch of stuff from the set, and um, I wasn't able to get in in time, really. I mean, it, maybe there's still some stuff there. They locked you out of the set. Yeah. <laughs> I don't live in Toronto is the thing, so I would have had to especially go in for that. And um, my life has been a little hectic over the past uh, two months with, uh, well, either being out of town, like on Blind Spot, um, or there are things that I do in my life other than acting um, that just are, are very, very busy in this moment, and um, those things meant that I just couldn't get into Toronto. But for anybody who wants things mm -hmm. from the set of Dark Matter, um, many of you probably know this. For those of you who don't, you can write a letter saying uh, what you want and why Dark Matter meant a lot to you, and you can send that to Prodigy Pictures or to Jay or Joe. And um, If you go to Joe Malozzi's Twitter, it'll yeah. be on there. At Baron Destructo. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, you write a letter and then uh, they read through them all. Mm -hmm. And they'll pick the best ones. And they will send you either the prop you want or a different prop. And that will be your prop to do whatever you choose to do with it. <laughs> Sell it on eBay. <laughs> Keep it forever. If you could have added something proper otherwise to the Raza just to make it more comfortable for three, what would you have added? <laughs> <laughs> a concubine, of course. <laughs> Uh, wow, yeah, a concubine, sure. Oh, that's my answer. I'm yeah, sticking with that good. one. Right? The jokey answer happens to be the best answer. <laughs> that's good, because the other guys were all like, a pillow. That's what they want. And a dog. They wanted dogs. Yeah, a dog would be kind of cool, but concubine. Yeah. Totally. Good answer. <laughs> that's a very three answer. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, finally, uh, I wanted to know in, well, what would three think, I guess? Uh, would you rather three die in a blaze of glory or get his happily ever after? Oh, happily ever after. I think despite the fact that three, uh, I think I'm talking as three, but I'm also talking as me. I think three, um, three has spent, well, spent the entire series trying to get back to his happily ever after. And he had it. He was the only one who had it on the entire show. I mean, we don't know... Six's backstory beyond his sort of cop days, and I guess he had a happily ever after, but he threw that away. Like, that was him and mm -hmm. his desire to say, no, I'm gonna go save the galaxy instead of hang out with my family. So, in a way, there were things that were more important than happily ever after, than going and being a beet farmer, you know, on some mm -hmm. distant planet. I joke about that, but I mean, that's what his life was. That's mm -hmm. the way he grew up until he was 10, with mm -hmm. a family that, you know, heck, they looked like farmers, I don't know. I don't know what they actually were. Um, I, I think they had a very simple and loving family life. And uh, yeah, I think that's exactly what Three wants. And that's what Sarah represents. And that's why it was so hard for him to understand that he, his own actions, were the ones that, that basically caused his only portal to that to disappear. And um, again, to be... I just love the character so damn much, you know? Like the fact that it's, it's kind of what we all want, man. I just want my happily ever after with my family. Like that's all we, all of us ever want, no matter kind of what life 
we live and what version of that happily ever after and whether it's LGBTQ happily, happily ever after or, you know, or immigrants or not or whatever the point is, we just want that. And three just wanted it. So I wish, and I, I'm pretty confident that he would have had it. Mm -hmm. Like that He's by season lucky. five, he would have had it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll hope so. Yeah, well, thank that's you. right. Thank you so much for talking to us and congratulations on the season three. Many condolences for that is not going forward, <laughs> but we certainly have lots of episodes to rewatch and enjoy yeah. more. Good luck for the future. Everyone Thank give you. a massive round of applause to our guest, Auntie Thank you, guys. Thanks to you all. And thank you. Thank you. Oh, look at this little guy. I know. Does anybody know what this little guy's doing here? It's mine. Were you here before in the previous panel? He shoots you if, uh, if you don't do well. Is this well, Doctor so Who shoot. character? Yeah, Dalek. You didn't know Daleks? No, obviously I did, because I said, is this a doctor? I didn't know the name, though. <laughs> I watched it when I was a kid uh, only, and I haven't watched any of the more recent iterations. But when I grew up um, in Canada, I had barely had a television. Uh, I had a television that my parent was black and white, and this was totally in the color days. People had VCRs, and I still had a black and white television that, had, that, that I had to go up, and I had to, like you know, tune in the UHF band. <laughs> Who, anybody remember that? I do. Here, do you remember that? Yeah. Are you as old as me? I'm almost as old as you. Damn. <laughs> um, and you'd like tune it in like this and then it would like get all fuzzy and then it would unfuzz and out of the unfuzz would be this little guy <laughs> sometimes. And, uh, and we would watch that show. It was like literally one of the only few shows that was actually on TV. Um, and yet somehow I became an actor. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, that's it? Are Thank we at you. time? Yes. Great. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Take care.